Today I have a short video for you guys discussing how to bolt on a six speed TR6060 behind a big block Mopar. I've personally successfully accomplished this swap and I've currently got the engine out of the car right now. Figured right now is as good a time as any to talk about what I did to get this swap to work. Now before we begin, I'll just need to let you guys know that this is not a budget friendly swap or a budget alternative to other options. This is all very situational depending on what you have available to you. And if you can get yourself a TR6060 for fairly cheap, doing what I'm about to show you into this video might be worthwhile. If you're planning to build a very powerful Mopar and you're going to need a manual transmission to be able to hold up with the abuse, then this swap is right up your alley. I don't think you're gonna be able to find a more rugged six speed for this application. First off, the TR6060 is very similar to the T56 and T56 Magnum. It's basically just a beefed up versions. You can find these transmissions behind Mustangs, Camaros, Scat Packs, Hellcats, Vipers, Corvettes. They're just all over the place, but the one we're talking about specifically is the one for Hemis. The Hemi transmission uses a very similar spline count to the T56, but it actually has a larger pilot. The output shaft of the transmission also does not have a slip yoke, and it actually has a bolt-on flange. Currently, my transmission has an adapter on it, but in order to get a drive shaft to work that has a slip yoke in the middle, you can purchase this adapter by Sonax. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. This unit is designed for a 1350 U-joint, so if you have a yoke on your rear axle that uses a 1350, then all you have to do is measure from cup to cup and then have a custom drive shaft made of that length. The shifter position is another topic. Normally these shifters hang out above the drive shaft, but I've installed a relocation kit that moves the shifter a little bit further forward so it has a better placement in the Mopars. In order to get this transmission to work with a big block, you're going to have to remove the factory bell housing and then install a bell housing designed for a T56. I purchased the bell housing from QuickTime and this bell housing is designed to take a T56, a Chevy T56, and then convert it to a big block Mopar bell housing pattern. The issue with using a standard QuickTime bell housing for a T56 on the TR6060 is that the input shaft is actually three quarters of an inch too long. And so you're gonna have to make an adapter, a spacer adapter that goes in between the transmission to the bell housing. I picked this up at my local metal supply place and all I did was secure the plate to the transmission using the dowel pins that are built into the transmission. And once the plate was secured, I used a transfer punch through these holes right here to mark the center of all the bolt holes that I needed to drill out. And then I used a drill bit just large enough for the new bolts to go through the transmission, through the adapter, and into the threaded holes in the bell housing. The second spacer you're going to have to make is the one that sits below the slave cylinder and that's going to be about a quarter inch taller than the plate. So if the big plate is three quarters of an inch, the other spacer should be about an inch tall. Unfortunately for me, I couldn't find this size plate in three quarters and I actually used one inch. And then I used the center of this to make myself a one inch spacer behind the slave cylinder and then I used a quarter inch plate underneath that to bring it out another quarter inch. So I've got one and a quarter inches behind the slave cylinder and I've got one inch on the plate itself. The only real drawback to doing that is that the pilot bearing actually sits a little bit further away on the ragged edge. You really should be another quarter inch further in and that would be a really good spot for it. If I can find a machine shop that'll mill this down a quarter inch, then I can take this plate off and then scoot everything forward another quarter inch. But the way I have it right now, it actually worked perfectly and I had just enough meat on the bone for this thing to work. As you can see, it could go in another quarter inch, maybe another three eighths of an inch, but we're definitely still in the safe zone. I verified that already. Before I can show you guys the pilot bearing, let's talk about the clutch real quick. Quick. This is a Center Force Solid Street Twin, or SST for short. It's a solid hub twin disc clutch designed for the Big Block Mopar. They make them for a bunch of applications, but this one specifically is for the Big Block Mopar. Typically, the discs inside would actually measure the old four speeds and three speeds, and some of the newer five speeds. But I called Center Force and I told them exactly what my application was, and they were able to set me up with a Big Block SST and then swapped out the hubs to match the TR6060. Lucky for us, the spline count is the same as a T56. So really they just grabbed a couple of T56 clutch discs and threw them in the box to replace the regular big block. All of these parts right here are all standard production parts. There's nothing special about this. It's just a combination that's just a little bit different. I'm just past the breaking period on this clutch and the only reason I pulled the engine out was because I was repainting the engine bay. Since I took everything apart, might as well make a video on it. 
but let me go ahead and pull the clutch off so I can show you guys the pilot bearing. All right, so I just got the SST off the back of the big block, and now we're just looking at the pilot bearing that's sitting here right behind the crank. Some of you guys might actually recognize this bearing because it is out of the 318s and 360 Magnum engines, and it's just a small block bearing that not only fits the pilot on the transmission, but it perfectly fits the back side of the crankshaft. And so you don't need to buy any kind of special bearing to get this swap to work. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is not a budget-friendly swap. You're gonna be spending a decent amount of money by the time you complete this project. But if you weigh your options compared to other things on the market, it's typically not too bad. Especially if the goal is to install a six-speed behind a big block Mopar. If you guys have any specific questions about the swap, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, signing out.